Hey, it's what you do. Hey, you know what I got? I got the eye of the shark. Is that what it's called? Is, is that the shit, bro? Because I'm not big on the label chaser. It tastes like that. I'm just saying. The brand I'm not big on labels. I like flavors, certain flavors. Mm -hmm. And that shit is right. The eye of the shark. Hey, hey. Shit. Go get gravy. Hey, Jeff, tell Jeff and them, Bobby, we all got to come in. Grab a seat, man, wherever. Go live with the music, the intros now. It's 5 o'clock. Hold on a second, Keisha. Just let me ask Ronald exactly what's going on because it takes two to tango and I need to hear his side of the story. So she's driving me insane. Got stress heavy on my brain. She keeps playing silly games. Man, I'm about to bring the pain. We seem to fuss and fight every day and every night. Please give some advice so we can see. I'm Zoe Williams, the voice of reason. If your relationship is in trouble, I'm the dude to call. Has your soulmate become your cellmate? Does black love still exist? What are your bedroom turnoffs? Fantasies and fetishes. Financial infidelity. I'm dating a fat person. Are they worth the wait? Trust me, this gonna be crazy. How about the heavy stuff? The child wasn't here, and you still had to pay child support. It's a very heated topic. I was that right. Mama's baby, daddy's maybe. I just have so many questions I want to ask you. I'm like the trail has been committed. He hit you with the bad yeah. hydro routine. How does he maintain his humpacity? He likes it when it pinches my neck. Why can't you open up, brother? I'm a karate man. Karate man rules on the inside. They don't show their weaknesses. Yeah. How do you write women so well? So William. Reason and accountability. The voice of reason. Of reason. Of Ladies and gentlemen, revolutionary voice of reason. We had, we had to do something different today. I wanted that music to play underneath me. I'm sorry. 
Maybe I didn't tell you. But let that music ride for a little bit. Just turn it down some. Ladies and gentlemen, the voice of reason is back in the building. Can I tell y'all? We got something special tonight. Don't worry about that other music. We had to do something different. Because you know. Here, turn it down. Just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Normally this show, if you're just tuning in, normally this show is filled with women. With all types of opinions and perspectives about how they think things should go. The change every 40 minutes. I decided to bring in the man squad to reset the palette, so to speak. Now, let me just do this real quick. That music you hear in the background is from Sin House. With You is the name of the record featuring the Aphrodite. Oh, it's about to be out everywhere. Ooh. Yeah, man, it's about to be out everywhere. Sin House on SoundCloud. Check it out. Sin House on SoundCloud. Sin House is spelled S E N H O U S C, one word. Sin House. With you featuring the Aphrodite. As a matter of fact, can you start it over for us real quick? And let's just get another little piece of it. And then I will continue into this topic. This shit's about to be hot monkey lava. Grits and gravy up against your navel. Have you ever felt it against your navel? (laughs) That's a very Al Green question. (laughs) Grits and gravy on my navel. He said it's an Mm outbreak. Play it again. Let's go. Okay. So we have our good friend here. His name is Darren. Darren. He is one of our top flight, top shelf engineers. Top flight security fool. Watch yourself. Well, I didn't I didn't mean to make that reference. Oh, okay. But you did. And then Corey Holcomb is on his way. Oh too. shit. It's it's it is shit about to be crazy. Okay. May, may, may I make a request? Well, uh, it's it's early in the show. Yes. What do you want to request? I would like at some point for Corey Holcomb to you do want- an impression of Jeff Brown while Jeff Brown is doing an impression of Corey Holcomb. Your impressions of Corey aren't really spot on. Well, that's, what, that's not what niggas be telling me now. No. I got these lousy bitches on lock. Not quite. You don't get to shake your head on <laughs> shit. <laughs> you are notorious for fucking them buttons up. So you work on that and answer that question right there. Larry. You're shaking your head. Yo, get them back. Shit. Come on. I, 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 I. Don't make him poke a big dog Hold with on, the stick. Man. Hold on. Can I promote this record? Sure. sure. Sin House. It's dope. I want everybody to check it out, man. It's this house Afrocentric kind of vibe, man. I dig it. And I'm fucking with it. I want everybody to go out and get it. Alright? You ain't even got to go out. Alright, here we go. You can bring us back to our music now. I'll be promoting this for the next four months. <laughs> That's dope. Because these guys are not paying attention. It's fine. Anyway... If this is your first time tuning into The Voice of Reason, please understand a little bit about what I do. The Voice of Reason is a relationship roundtable. Now, normally I have it set up for women to come in here and vent. And he was he was horrible to me. And I've, and I've been victimized by... I know right. I'm the one with the vagina, but still. <laughs> it's his fault. It's his fault. He made me fuck him. I asked him to come in me, but I wasn't serious. So. I didn't know it had <laughs> live cultures in it. Yeah, it did. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was regular yogurt. No. I didn't know. No. Okay, no. so. Now you got a son. So here we go. Let's see. Yeah. I could keep his son away from him because he didn't That's right. deliver on the relationship. We've promise. got to hate him. <laughs> We've got to hate That's him. Jeff Brown, 
is over. <laughs> we got to. Everybody know it ain't great. You don't get that. You, your voice don't get that deep with regular puberty. Hilarious. This nigga had a deep voice in fourth grade. Yeah. He had uh, a beard, you, too. Oh, uh, you forgot your ass out of here. <laughs> 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 had a full beard in the fourth grade. <laughs> Listen here, Miss McCubbins. <laughs> okay. You're the only sixth grader talking about you niggas don't be leaning on my car. <laughs> Man, Listen, car? I got I gotta take this test before recess because right. I got a construction job I got. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Okay, <laughs> Chucky, when I talk about your mama, I'm really venting about our relationship. Larry. <laughs> nigga came to class in a hard hat. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh Lord, shit. the voice of reason is about to be crazy. Grady, could you sharpen them pencils? No, bitch, I'm union. Hilarious. <laughs> don't do that. Union? Hey, it's union. going down. It's going down tonight. Listen, this is what I need you guys to do before we get into the topic. I need you guys to go cash mob this company, Total Package Energy. We need to move 80 cases before the end of the month. Okay. Yeah. This month goes to the 31st, right? How, how many in one case? It's 12 in a case. Oh, yeah, them easy to move. It's only $29 a case. Black on? Black on. Oh, yeah. Out of the Bay Area. Oh, yeah. Come on, man. The best energy drink in the world. Think if the truck driver who ran into, what's my man? Who? Uh, uh, the comedian. Tracy. Tracy Morgan. Tracy, yeah. Tracy Morgan. Think yeah. of the truck driver who ran into him had a bottle of Total Package Energy. And Tracy wouldn't have $80 million. Could have avoided tragedy. Yeah, well, there's that. Yeah. <laughs> Total Package Energy, the greatest <laughs> energy drink in yeah. the world. Can I be honest with you? Go ahead. If I could pick the nigga to be in the car with me that would die, I would let that happen to me for $80 million bucks. Okay. Well, if I could pick shit, the common, God if dang. I could pick the comic that was going to bite the dust and I knew it was going to happen to him. Oh, man, I got a busload of niggas that's in the way. Hey, Jeff, oh, guess shit. what? What? This isn't your show where it you talk not. all the time. Okay, cool. It is not. Can we finish the promo? You here? sure can. Okay. I'm just thinking out loud. Total package energy. Let's get Jeff out of here. Clean Jesus. his palate. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's the new reset. Oh, Clean your shit. ballot. Here we go. <laughs> so again, Total Package Energy is our sponsor for tonight. Also, don't forget to get the Love Matters CD. I shipped out about 12 of these today, this morning. Love Matters. Go to my website, imzowilliams.com. Also, you guys got to go pre-order The Holographic Relationship, my new book. Please go do it. The shit's about to be crazy Do it. tonight. Cause I got to hey, we got to deal with some shit. Cause it's 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 insanity in the streets, what's going on Uh-oh. in relationships. Mm. And I needed to bring in some men. Okay. Some goddamn grown ass. Some man. grown ass men. Some real men that can speak to what's happening. You're damn right. Fathers. Yeah. yeah. Grandfathers. Mm-hmm. Niggas who know what's up. We waiting on Mm -hmm. Corey to come through. He'll be here shortly. I want to hear from people who are inspired by tonight's topic. The number to dial is 323-230-4610. You're listening to the Voice of Reason on Dash Talk X. Special guest in the building, the elder, Bobby Glanton Smith. How about it? How about it? What's happening, Zoe? Yeah, one of the realest motherfuckers in the world. Slicker than a can of oil, cut you without you even feeling it until you get to the crib. Right. Then, right. you're all right as long as you don't move. <laughs> you, if you move, you fall apart. He hit you with that razor. If you just stay there till you heal, you okay. Shit. Just don't move. Now. Then, we got... Let me just, because Chicago's thick right now, How in the it? building right now. Yes, sir. I'm starting to realize that Midwest area, Chicago, Detroit, Detroit, Cleveland, Cleveland, right up in there. Where, where was uh, Dayton? Where was uh, Richard from? Peoria? Peoria. You see, Chicago got somewhat of a lock on the comedy greats situation. Well, you know why it's the melting pot, so. I fuck with that. And, and comedy comes from pain, and white people were very generous with it in the Midwest. Okay, well, thank you, Jeff, uh, for claiming all of the pain, or at least most of it. It's fine. No, I'm uh, just claiming the use of it. I'm claiming the use of it. 
If that's the case, then all of the jokes should be coming from the South. It's fine. Uh, My homeboy in the building. This This motherfucker right here. White people stole from him, too. (laughs) White people stole from Grady? Of course. Where do you think they get Commander Zod from Superman? Oh, shit. Because he got that V no hairline. Shit. I never thought about that. And the beard. The only nigga said that. Him and that goddamn Corey. Kneel before Zod. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no. Zod. That's my nigga Zod. My homeboy, Grady. Ray what up? Grady. What actor, up, comedian, the whole nine yards. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. In yeah, the building. Yeah, and then, me. of course, my co host from the Zoe Up Morning Show. One of the most untamable radio personalities. Don't even try. Nigga don't follow no rules. I put it like this. He's underrated. Jeff oh, Brown. Wow. Jeff Brown. Thank oh, you. yeah, yeah, That yeah, nigga's yeah. underrated. Well, niggas don't give him his props. Thank you. Thank no, you. he funny than a motherfucker. You're right, too. Well, you know what? That's it's true. Yeah. Yes, sir. You're right. Yes, you know sir. what I mean? Thank like, you. it's just, yeah. when I got out here, the first thing that nigga did was he didn't even shake my hand. He just, let me see. And then... And one day he was like, oh, you ready? That's what he is. That's what he is. Jeff Brown in the building. What up, Jeffrey? I am well, sir. I'm a comedy snob, but I am well. A comedy snob. If you don't have three jokes, I wish I wrote. He said it on stage, too. He really say he is a comedy snob. I'm a comedy snob. I ain't gonna lie. Jeff (laughs) funny. I will embrace my my arrogance. I'm an arrogant motherfucker. I ain't gonna lie, Jeff. With good reason. (laughs) With good reason. Jeff is funny. Okay. All right. Shit. Let's get past that. Motherfucker. Jesus Christ. All right. Tonight's topic. Mansions. You know what a mansion is, right? Every yeah. man wants a mansion. Not really, but, yeah. Wants to be the king of his castle. Yes. But in order to build a mansion, you need architects. You need blueprints. You need plans. Land. You need land. Hermits. You and your family have usurped our lands. Yes. And we are here to reclaim what is ours. <laughs> Tonight's topic, <laughs> mansions. You need people crazy. of color who will work for oh, cheap. That nigga crazy. Men building and destroying on the current state of manhood. Wow. We're building mansions tonight. How about it? Who going first? I got questions. Yeah. So how this goes, I rattle off a bunch of questions. Yeah. And then you guys get a framing of what we're doing on the show. Is the shaming of men for falling short of traditional responsibilities now taboo with gender role reversal? If women is balling and and making more money than us. And more educated than us, can they still claim the traditional responsibilities that come with manhood? I'm supposed to protect you? Go take an MMA class, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to provide for you? You make more money than me. Right. You said you didn't need no man. You said you didn't need no man. But so- they want that deal, though, so we ain't really gone. <laughs> <laughs> These hoes got to get the deal though, so yeah. we we still let. They just don't want the feeling, and I don't I don't care. <laughs> they, just, right. they just don't want the feeling. That's right. Like, yeah. they, I don't care how much uh, plaid you to the lesbians who are listening. I don't care how much plaid you wear. I don't care what kind of Bronco you drive. It still takes two of you on one end of a couch when we're moving. <laughs> Nigga said the Bronco. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care how many Marlboros you smoke. I don't care what, what breed your dog is. Oh, what the God. fuck? I don't care how many tattoos you get. There's still two of you on one end of the couch. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Jeff. That's wow. the truth. I got questions yeah. you're not supposed to answer them all right now. Just take mm-hmm. it in. With role reversal, are men relieved of their responsibilities as protector and provider? Ooh, thank you, Jesus. What exactly is the privilege that black men have over black women. Do black men have a privilege over black women? Mm-mm, not that I know. When you start looking at the numbers of incarcerations, black men, for every 100,000 black men there are, the incarceration rate is 10,000 for every 100,000. Mm, Sisters is in the hundreds Shit. for every 100,000. They smart, too. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they are. 
We want to understand what this whole shit is about. When a man does acquiesce to embrace femininity in his being, does his wimp, does his woman begin to lose respect for him as a man? Because you get a lot of men Ooh. out there talking about my feminine side and understanding what she talking about and empathizing. Mm-hmm. Do women see that as a weakness? Do women want sensitive men? Oh, God. (laughs) At what point does female empowerment become male disempowerment? Hmm. Good question. I'm asking real questions tonight. Disembowerment? I'll take it, Bobby. (laughs) Same. (laughs) I thought that's what he said. I thought thought that's what he said. (laughs) I'll take it, Bobby. I I ain't even saying much. (laughs) 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 I didn't say nothing, Bobby. You know, you know, gee, I ain't Uh, saying that. I'm just asking, man. I don't know. How does women's ephemeral nature mesh with the steady expectations of manhood? How can your expectations of me be consistent, but your mood and your mind and your heart and your spirit ain't? Uh. You consistent about what the fuck you want from me, but you get to change all the goddamn time. It's a woman's prerogative to change her mind. Shut up. You consistent as fuck about what you want from me, though. (laughs) We talking real talk tonight. It's a barbershop in the voice of reason. It's never happened before. Mansions. Mm. Men building and destroying on the current state of manhood. Panic now and avoid the rush. <laughs> yeah. That's some OG shit there. Man, here we go. Oh, let me tell Niggas you got lost. Niggas got lost. They shit. He on the phone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, shit, Bob. Is hip hop Go ahead. the last bastion of manhood that is now being turned that got braids with beads in it now into gaiety land mm. skirts well, well niggas is being cheerleaders now so <laughs> shit that's <laughs> right right fuck everything nah right. niggas <laughs> we got niggas spirit. is cheerleaders we oh, got yeah. spirit yes we do yeah. <laughs> how about you yeah, you know, just, um, yeah on that shit. so I'm finna run to the OG to start us off real yeah. quick Cor- uh, uh, Bobby I need you to talk to me man I'm seasick and water bound. <laughs> no, because Bobby, you done mm. seen shit that none of us have seen. What does black masculinity look like today as opposed to when you was coming up as a young man in your teens and 20s? What does black manhood Ooh, look wee. like today Ooh, versus what it looked like then? Well, in that era, the 50s and the 60s, Around the age of 10 or 11, you went from cowboys to girls. And the things that you had in common with your classmates who happened to be female, they started to change because the body's changing. And we kind of squared off in those respective groups. Boys becoming young men and young girls, you know, growing dimensions that get your attention. So it was pretty simple. All right, now there were some diversions along the way where some guys decided that they wanted to try this other way of uh, co-mingling. Okay. And, but for the most part, uh, you looked like a man, you sounded like a man, and you went about the business of trying to become a decent man. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. predicated on your word, uh, mm-hmm. the company that you keep, mm-hmm. the things that you, you stand on. You know, your word means something. So it was a, it was very formal in that way, but it was space for you to grow. Right. And make mistakes and know that if you're trying to be a man, then it's full, it's 24-7. And here we are in 2018, and I got Me Too fatigue. Me Too fatigue. I mean, it's just amazing how I feel drained uh, a lot of days because I just— See stuff that make my mouth fly wide open. You know, where a woman has really gotten to a point where it's not so much her income that's the problem. The physicality. I see sisters that really look like they want to mix it up physically if there's some, <laughs> you know, difference of opinion. And uh, 
It makes me scratch my head and try to just say, let me take a nap and see if it was just a bad dream. Mm. No, because it is very confusing for me. And uh, I would assume people in my age range, based on the conversations I have with folks, are equally just, you know, just, we just, we just don't know, man. Grady. <laughs> you know, it is some buttercream out here <laughs> claiming to be full on man. Okay. I need to know the, the new rules <clears throat> of masculine boundaries. What I mean by that is there's certain shit yeah. real men mm-hmm. ain't going to do around each other, to each other. You know what I mean? There's right. certain boundaries that can't be crossed. Well, well, first of all, we can't really share uh, emotions. And uh, Here we go. Outside of good high five on the basketball court if you still hoop. But most of the time, niggas is too busy in their feelings because of some emotional shit that he really dealing with. Because that's the lack of the old man that he never had. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Mm-hmm. So when it come down to being a part of a conversation amongst men, like I'm the youngest in here, me and the engineer. So right. When I sit around this, I, most young niggas is trying to get away from the knowledge right. that's in here because he don't he don't know and he don't have the mental capacity to even think like, oh shit, I'm gonna be forty years old one day. Because mm-hmm. wow. that's when you start growing. Wow. Once you get over thirty five. Your twenties you bullshitting. Right. Your thirties you you figuring it out. Once you get forty, you like, okay, you fully you know, you fully developed now. Right. Regardless what the bread look like. Right. And so I think the I should say the cat, I'm forty one. Right. So the cats say, "Oh, you forty one? Like, yeah, I take care of myself." But I was raised by the old niggas. Right. And I was cool to sit around them, and if you was a cat that paid attention, old cats will let you sit amongst them because you're not talking when they mm. talking. Mm. Like if you come in the crib, there we go, and your auntie say, "How I get out of here?" That's usually the little girl is running her damn mouth, and they really talking about some real shit. Mm-hmm. But if you come around the old cats, and you just shut up. You shut up, you want to be like your uncle, your grandfather, your dad, and then they have a seat. Most of the time you stand there, but they're going to look at you like if we sit now, you need something. Yeah. So you're going to have to take a seat. Explain your presence yeah. to what, us. What do you want? And then, here, take a seat. This is what this is. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times, the, the men nowadays, because they don't, you know, they don't, the fathers are missing due to prison drugs. Right, mm-hmm. that quo and tell pro shit really fucked up our situation. Mm-hmm. So these cats really don't have any method to their insanity shit. Right. So a nigga got to talk. That's what I always said. A social media nigga was a punk nigga. Mm. So he said, "I got to get my voice out here." Mm. He was beat on. He was the chicks didn't like him. He wasn't popular in school. He didn't make the basketball team. It's First piece of ass, he was 25. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ah, we, we, you know what I mean? You so, are really that's right. painting a bleak picture. Yeah. No, I'm coming to a, you, Jeff. Wait on now. No, Wait on it. So it's it's always it's always a good thing to like, but you can't talk to a, a room full of men about you got to have one person that you can go to, and most of us, we don't really have that. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Jeff Brown? You wow. did a show on uh, your show, your the show, inappropriate hour, yes. where you were breaking down the things that young motherfucking men need. Sure. One of the things you said was a truck. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, without a, but then again, that's some on seriously that. old school shit that yeah. uh, my uncles used to tell me is that uh, you need to make money with a car. Not for a car, mm-hmm. and uh, the you see these niggas that run out here with their money and buy brand new cars instead of brand new trucks. They ain't gonna never have a brand new house. <laughs> that's so true. Damn, I see you, Bobby. I, that, I, I see it. He come on, dude. That's why you think I call him Uncle Bobby because he just Bobby. like the dudes Damn. that raised me. I was raised around an army of lions. Yeah, these these the, that that's why uh, this beta male shit. Now, turns my stomach. Mm. I promise you, you will pry 
my alpha manhood from my cold dead hands i will not i don't give a damn again no that's not right i don't give a fuck who i offend with my manhood i'm a man first before i'm even black i'm a man and there's certain shit that i'm not gonna you gonna see just how far an individual can bust a ass without giving up any asshole can get in this town because that's how i'm getting down well, mm. oh, okay. shit was that clear in the I name of fried okra my nigga all right. right so <laughs> i'm gonna say it again in the name of fried okra <laughs> listen we in here tonight because a serious conversation needs to be had is real masculinity under attack of course and if so, for what purpose? Now, I know how my daughter responds to me because I've been in her life the whole time. How about it? So there's certain levels of respect that she shows me off top because You've that's the there. first man I've ever loved. Right. And that's my father. And right. I know who he is. I have a relationship with him. So. Take me out of the the equation, she becomes the norm. She becomes the standard for what we're dealing with. If you look at the research, the research will tell you 70% of African-American kids are born in a household without a dad. Yeah. So me being there puts her mm. in the 30 percentile. You get it? Yeah. Mm. So now, even on top of that, Cause there's some girls that got daddies that ain't shit. That's there, right? So now you gotta sliver that motherfucking thirty percent down mm. even farther, because right. to be in a household with a dad, that's about that's something. horrible. Yeah, that that ain't horrible. That's not horrible. That but a dad that's about something. Mm. So what I'm starting to see is the horrible women that come from those situations are more acceptable than the young boys that come from that situation. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Because yes. there is an attack on black masculinity that sees black masculinity as default dangerous. Well, yeah. if, if you're a female that comes out of a female cookie factory, then there's a, that, that makes a lot more sense than trying to push a male through that female cookie factory ah. because that male is going to come out missing some ingredients like ah. the ability to say no and not give the yeah case in point uh the difference between a man's no and a woman's no is that when a woman disagrees with you or wants to change your position on a subject she also wants to change your emotion mm. on a subject mm. When a man, especially if it's your goodwill, when I want you to change a position on a subject, to be honest with you, I really don't give a fuck how you feel. Mm. When I say it's too dangerous, baby, no, you can't go over there with your girls. That's over there. I, I don't, I'm just telling you that you can't go as your man because I'm in charge of security for you. Right. Not because I don't like your friends. Your friends are your friends. You pick. If they fuck us up, that's on you. Uh, I'm not, I don't pick your friends for you, but I'm telling you because I happen to know that some rolling 60s got a problem <coughs> with some niggas around the corner over that way. I shouldn't have to explain that part to you. My yeah. no should stand. Yeah. And the difference between my no and your no is that when you tell me no about something, you want me to like it. But see, I really don't give a fuck. But see, like Jeff, it. hold on. And, and Bobby, I want you to chime in on this. Sure. We live in a society now that doesn't avow, that doesn't value male advice oh wow from mm. male to shit. from male to woman shit. yeah well not in the brown house but yeah shit do you understand what i'm saying it does mm -hmm. nigga who is you who is you to be telling me what the fuck to do <laughs> yeah yeah there's not a space in my life for you anymore other than sex and, 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 and some niggas break in here and janitorial duties Nigga, I need you to uh, clean the gutter right. or. Hey, mop and fuck! Get in there! 
I need you. Hey, I, I need you to take my car to get an oil change. So what happens is, mop and fuck. A man do my brakes, eat my ass. That's just, it. I'm just saying. A man, a man, crazy. A man crazy. No, but here we here, here we at now. A, a, a man is now starting to be seen in the same light. This is about to be far as a dildo. No, that's not that far. It's no. a tool yeah. to sure. be used to produce an outcome. Bobby, how do we reclaim what it means, the real meaning of masculinity? It's ironic that uh, your subject matter today um, connects to an event I was at at the California African American Museum Friday night. I was the master of ceremonies for the 90th birthday party of Mr. Horace Clinty uh, <laughs> Bowers. Bowers and Sons Cleaners. They've been in business for over 60 years. And as I sat there and read through his bio, and I said, wait a minute. Then I looked around the room at these generations of Bowers. Mm-hmm. And the little kids dressed formally because he had a, uh, he was born in 1928, so he had a Roaring Twenties theme. You know, the brother bounced up in a, a, a classic 1929 car. And mm-hmm. it was like going back in time because the people got up and testified to this man's goodness and mm-hmm. greatness. It was it was heartwarming, and it's one of those examples that we have to draw upon. People can't do something if they ain't seen it, uh, uh, at least even from a distance or on television. Wow. It's outside of their frame of reference, and that's why it's really a struggle at this point for me. When I see young kids, I realize and accept that I, I'm at that teaching stage, whether I want to be or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. because the, what little bit of sense I got, it came from being around people who sold into my life. Yes, sir. And that's what they're obligated. They didn't even squabble about it. They said, look, you might not like this, you know, but I'm with you and get off this corner. Right. How you doing in school? You know, the Mas- yeah. the Maasai community in Africa survived and thrived for 500 years for one simple reason. They had a mantra that went from generation to generation. How are the children? Mm. 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 You don't even start a conversation with asking Another person, how are the children? Shit. Because Damn. we're not going to let them slip through the crack. Because yes. the quality not gonna happen. of the children reflects the future quality of the community. Oh, brother. And, and it's, it's chaos for that reason. I mean, we're three generations away from passing certain fundamental truths to young people. Mm. Uh when he got up, Mr. Biles got up and spoke. He said, one of the things that I've lived by, and he has accumulated a considerable amount of wealth, okay? And he said, I learned as a, from my parents, you can't borrow your way out of debt. Mm. Ooh. Ooh, we. And if you don't get that message Mm-mm. as a young, especially now, whoo, we, by the time you get out of school, whether you dropped out, quit, or graduated, if you don't understand that simple principle, you will never be able to accumulate, particularly a black male, the mm. things that people expect you to have. Yeah, because you didn't get that. You didn't get that memo. But do you do you think that do the kids now? They I should say the generation. Do they even know what they're supposed to have? No, no. They know what so they see, the, right? Yeah. And mm. and that creates a desire for yeah. those things first and foremost. They yeah. don't they don't see a a a raggedy car and work boots equaling yeah. that next level shit. All they see is that next level shit. So uh, what you were discussing about getting what you were supposed to get, uh, what they don't understand. Is that in order for you to get where you're supposed to be, your outside image, if you're going if you're gonna take a path that you don't borrow your way out of debt, your image gonna take a black eye. Mm. At some point, nigga, you're gonna wear a smock. Mm. At some point, somebody gonna stand in front of you and order something to eat that's in lights. Uh at some point, you're gonna sweep a floor that ain't yours. You're gonna you're gonna do something to start. 
to create your base. Young people seem not to want to create a base. But that's the that's the mom and daddy role, right? Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, because yeah. They didn't from, see. yeah, because they you know so that like my kids. That's why I moved them out here to to L A. because they never they like well, damn, this is sunshine and palm trees. Like this shit is trash. Forget all that. It's it's no jobs. It's fifty one percent. Unemployment in Chicago. That's why I right. got you out of here. Mm-hmm. This ain't out here for you to play. You know what I'm saying, <laughs> right, right. But it, when it you might look, look at better, that, right, it's cool. Be, yeah. But then when you you break it down, like hold up, this ain't for you to come out here and surf and you know, it's beautiful. It's cool. Yeah. But if you see the cats that's from LA, that's like they they from here, right? Sure, right, right, right. Their work ethic is not there, right. Mm, mm. You notice most of them, and I should say, I'm just saying from being in, in entertainment, mm-hmm. mm, just entertainment. They, we can because I know the person. I've been to the parties or I. Sure. So my sure. kids is like, well, dad, that's such and such. Like, oh, yeah, but we had to sweep. We had to shovel snow to play basketball. Come on. So let we me. We had to cut grass. Go ahead. Let yeah. Me, let me hit you with that. Just let me give you a little bit of pushback. Cool. Because you from here. Because I'm from here. Yeah. So By the way, let, Chattanooga. Just, let, me, let me give you a little pushback on that. Just see, a little bit. His see country the, is a can of I know he is. Yeah, yeah. The, Bama the, ass nigga. See, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. And a bussy with something, too. <laughs> see, ain't no joke. So ain't no joke. Don't no, see anyway. Yo, Bama ass. <laughs> <laughs> you eat purple hub peas, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> AKA Black Eyed Peas. Some hey, niggas I don't know what Say it things is. like up earn like that. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't he talking to him like that? Then look up there and get my keys. Yeah. Shit. You don't get your candy yet. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, so, what, was your, what was your. Oh, shit. Here come Corey. Let's, uh, let's here it is. Here. All right. <laughs> oh, shit. Hey, we need to get him a chair. Uh, some here phones. come the ignorance. <laughs> the one right here. Hey, hey, man. <laughs> All right. mm. So, we got, this, we got the city in the building. The, the, the whole city yeah. in the building right now. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies up, and yo? gentlemen, on Dash Talk X, comedian and actor Corey Holcomb just walked into the show to join the conversation. I just wanted to paint the picture for you so you guys can see what's cracking, or at least hear what's cracking. But let me just say this to to your point, Grady. Yeah. Now, the West Coast, in terms of hustle, yeah, is like Steve Largent. Oh, Seattle. Wow. I get it. Deceptively quick, <laughs> good hands. Now, the, the, it's not Art Monk. No, of course. It's not Willie Galt. Mm-mm. See, that's the East Coast and the Midwest. Or even because, Chris Collins work. Or, or Chris Collins work. You yeah. guys have the winter. Yeah, we do. So the speed out here is a little different, but don't be fooled. The grind is is Steve Largent. It's Hall of Fame. It's ah. <laughs> What's the noise, baby? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I get it. You under dig? We in here right now. Today's topic is great. We got to get Corey tuned in to what we talking about. We building mansions, men in here building and destroying on the current state of manhood. We're talking about how manhood is under attack. We're talking about how. Anything that represents black masculinity and the strength of it is now labeled as dangerous. On some clutch to pearls type shit. Is now labeled as criminal. (laughs) Right? On some criminal shit. Yeah. Just by default. Now understand this. There was a report that talks about how young black girls or young black boys are sent to detention at a higher rate than any ethnic group. In school. Sure. Yeah. No level of questioning is tolerated from a young black boy. Like, you have to understand, intelligence intimidates. Of course. Right? Yeah. So if a young black boy hits a teacher who are predominantly women, 
There are more female teachers than there are male teachers. Very few black male teachers. Right. Very few black male teachers. Who are you talking to when you question me like that? Go to the motherfucking dean's office. Because I don't want to lose control of this situation. Now, understand what's happening, though. The little girls, our sisters, see a way on how to deal with us. Yeah. When they grow mm-hmm. up and get in relationship with us. Okay. We call the principal real quick. 911. The principal is 911. Okay. You in the dig? Yeah. So we living in a society that's clearly criminalizing black men. Clearly. <laughs> right. So what I want to do is bring Corey Holcomb in here. What are some of the most egregious Man code violations that are running rampant in this motherfucker now. You ask me? I'm asking you, nigga. Right. <laughs> Look, I want to say this to all of the women out there. Here we go. You must listen to this. It's very important to keep families together. If your man slapped the shit out of you and you deserve it, you should not get the authorities involved. When your man slapped the shit out of you, that's God's way of testing y'all to see can you work shit out <laughs> and can you, and to see if you can accept authority the right way. Now, if you got a crazy dude who just be slapping the shit out of you all the time, you need to get the hell away from him. But if your man occasionally, once, like a, quarter. once a year, once, a, once quarter. a year, once a year, okay, it builds up within that year. Yeah, 20, 20, within a 12-month period. He slapped the shit out of you. And you know you had it coming. Yeah. You know you had a haul-off coming. You know you just wouldn't you, you wouldn't let up. Yeah. yeah. Your job is to take that slap, go sit down, and talk about it when shit comes down. That's right. Reevaluate your shit. I want you to know that if you care about your That's family. Right. That's right. If the words and another thing, motherfucker, came out your mouth oh, five shit. minutes before that, you know. Or, you, or you ain't shit. Or, or if, if you use the word degree and you weren't arguing about whether Freemasons or deodorant, hilarious. How the fuck did the word degree come out your mouth? <laughs> Don't nobody give a fuck about what some white man taught you. That's real shit. That is not That's in here. Right now. Your degree was the time you spent trying to fit in. Yes. That's what a degree is. Yes. Because I ain't got no degree and I'm doing better than you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Why am I proofreading your letters? Right. What? I've been doing better than you when I didn't oh, have a shit. job. That's bitch. right. The oh, hustler. Shit. It is the, the yes. It is the era of the hustler now. Oh, Those of you who study yeah. for jobs, poof, bad news. There are no more. There are no more jobs. And not yeah. no more jobs. Just paying you enough to get on your feet for real. No. They pay you enough to come back to work. So Ooh. bow down to that real nigga. Because if you ain't got no real nigga, you ain't got shit anyway. If you right. got a beta male, you fucked up. You yeah. out here bad, bitch. You, what the fuck is you going to do? <laughs> you he out said. here bad. What the fuck is you going to do if bad. you got a, a man that ain't got the courage to tell people, shut the fuck up? There's women out here who've been with a man their whole life. They ain't never seen him raise up on nothing. Nothing. And I ain't talking about raise up out of emotion. I'm just saying, when somebody is out of pocket, you got to show them what the fuck they need to see about who you are. How about it? And deal with the consequences later. Oh, they long. That's a bait. I mean, that's sure. an alpha male. But see, sure. this society has been trading opportunity for black masculinity for a long time. I'm going to dangle this opportunity in exchange for your masculinity, for the, niggas. Yes. I'm going to dangle this opportunity in exchange for... For the point of no return. But you can't be around no bitch or no nigga that will that will challenge that of you. You can't be around them. It's gonna go bad. Nigga, that was my granddaddy. <laughs> it's gonna go bad. Every man out there who hang with motherfuckers that be on bullshit. I'm telling you, you're a bullshit motherfucker right now. Thank with you. And if you don't do it as much as they do, that means you're cheating yourself. Because you're still a bullshit motherfucker. You need to go on and be true to yourself. Right. <laughs> so if you're around a bitch that ain't shit, god damn it, I can't tell you the consequences that's heading your way. <laughs> I can't even tell you what's about to happen to you. But I'm telling you, you're going to know. You're going to be like, this is what the fuck Corey was talking about. I can't tell I you, but you're going to be right. able to tell somebody else. I got this band on my ankle because I handle my business. 
<laughs> and All you did was handle your business, but now you got a band on your ankle. You yeah. you can't you got to register to move now. Cause you you around a bitch that ain't got your back. So again, they've taken a man's ability to put his foot down. Mm. Cause men used to be able to the whole metaphor, putting your foot down, having a little ankle bracelet because you tried to put your foot down. They trying to cut you off at the feet where your power is. You trying to put your foot down and the government and your woman is saying, Nigga, you can't do that shit no more. Mm. So how do you do it today? Because you already know as soon as you do some shit, you, as soon as you put your foot down, going to jail. You, you got to deal with somebody that's on your level. That's the first thing. Thank you. You got to deal with the broad that's on your level. Most of the time, most of these niggas be paying for these bitches and then putting them in cribs and shit. shit. And then the Mm -hmm. broad lets you get a man cave and you a whole ass nigga because you you abide by the man cave. You little whole ass nigga. You don't even run your man cave. (laughs) When she come in there, you turn down the radio and act like the teacher just came. Right. I can't smoke no weed in here. real niggas out here. Bitch coming up. Bitch, what the fuck you want in here? Did you see the TV on? You talking over motherfuckers. You the see this filth on these screens? Right. 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 All this filth we got in here. You, you see this know, woman over yes. here gagging? Yes. <laughs> don't come in here with niggas just gagging. Thank Bitch, I love you. you, but don't try me. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Don't come in here. Oh shit! Don't come in here to empty. Don't come in here to empty your mouth. Come in here to fill it. Don't come oh, in here. That's that. that. Don't come in here to empty yeah, your yeah, mouth. Something like saying nothing like that to that woman. That's, the whole time they've been around a man, never. and it ain't raising up to be bad. It's raising up to to, to show them who you fucking with. Yes. Yeah. This is a this is a dance. Ever since we've been around each other, bitch. And I'm gonna leave this dance, bitch. God damn it, you follow my lead. Uh, yeah. If not, yeah, we, let me tell you, if you a real nigga, dog, you gonna always argue with your bitch until she realize you're not gonna change or y'all get the fuck away from All each other. Day. You know what? I, I, and I I, I can't. Yeah. I, I, I gotta. I, I feel you. This time, this time, I lucked out. I fucking lucked out. My wife, I lucked out. I did. I got a props to her mother for raising classy, respectful, grounded African Afrocentric females. That's what that that's that's the key. A woman who understands who is not insulted by this term. Stay in your place because what if that place is queen? Qu- to stay in the place of queen means you don't do commoner shit. That means I don't have to worry about you cussing me out at my auntie's funeral because commoners do that. Queens don't do that. Queens understand, wait till we get in the car. All day. Que- queens understand. Anti- that my- Anti-queens be arguing with the nigga you for the fight. Anti-queens. Instead of stepping back and getting ready to do what we got to do because you're supposed to take your bitch to target practice. I ain't even going to lie to Thank you. you. Right. Really, if Thank your you. girl ain't got the gun, y'all go to jail because if you got it, God damn it. Something yeah. sad. Wow. Yeah. She finna be somebody else's but girl. But when I see yeah. dudes out here trying to grab their woman from arguing with a dude where it's really on in the street, I'll be like, homie, you can't you ain't have got that your bitch shit with you. Control. That's an untrained dog. Yes. <laughs> Yes. You, you got a Rottweiler that don't know how to act a rat. Oh, 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 bitch, shut the fuck up. I'm finna fight the nigga. You not? Right. Go get the car, bitch. Hold me down from right there. Go get the car. <laughs> Call yeah. the nigga. Sit in the corner with your shit oh, and shit. wait for somebody else right. to move. That's your oh, position. Shit. Corey out here, he finna get into it with this nigga. Y'all need to get out of here for real. There you go. That's a real bitch. Nah. Right. Fuck that nigga. Hey, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Bitch, I could never be in the streets with you, yeah, bitch. We gonna get like, killed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> dear, dear black women that grab at the sky when there's nothing there. We talking about you. Um, and nothing, boo. Yeah. That shit. When you're right. not grabbing he, it, no, I that. hate yeah. that. The only that thing they shit. own is the bundle that's glued to their dome. <laughs> they own nothing. <laughs> that bundle is yours, though. Bitch. The bundle. <laughs> the bundle. The bundle. And the glue. The bundle. Dude, they don't own shit. the glue because it's fading. <laughs> the only thing they can Make do is keep it. that bundle. Yeah. The that bundle. sweat on that skull that's full of all kind of chemicals. Yeah. It's melting the glue. Yeah. The glue is like, bitch, I'm yeah. trying to hold up. Yeah. Why does, why, why does your scalp smell like work boots? 
<laughs> oh shit! Oh shit! <laughs> So look, oh, fucking stupid boy. <laughs> hey, hey, you're listening to the voice of reason on Dash Talk X. We turned up right now. It's a true oh. and living alpha man show tonight, man. Wow. We not playing. Tonight's topic, if you're just tuning in, mansions. Men building and destroying on the current state of manhood. We talking about it, man. What exactly is the privilege that black men have over black women? Do we even have a privilege over them? I always say to sisters, you can't be a renaissance woman and a traditional woman at, at the, the same, same time. time. They tried them. You know what I did? You can't be like, you. I want a traditional <sighs> man while you're a renaissance woman. The world is changing. The world has put you in the driver's seat. And it's put you in a position to where you don't respect the traditional man that you claim you want. You know what it is? You claim you want a dog. Right. An alpha. But right. you really don't want him. You want a Cocker Spaniel, actually. You want him with the remote control that come with him. <laughs> right. You want a minion, bitch. Uh, You see? Mm -hmm. <laughs> a eunuch. Yeah. So now, I'm going to hit you with this. The numbers out here ain't no goddamn joke. Ooh -wee. Yeah. Here we go. The now numbers ain't no joke. Yeah. Now we're getting it. Come on. Hit them 50% of America's prison population, black men. That's number one. That's mm -hmm. set up on purpose. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Sure. Yeah. That's set up on purpose. That's sure. number one. Fifty yeah. percent. Sure. Now America is twenty five percent of the world's population, but America has what is it? America is the number one country in the world for, for, pri for prison, prison, prison inmates. And it's people, yeah. Sure. You underdig? Yeah. So now you got that. Mm -hmm. On top of that, fifty percent of high school dropouts are African American males. That's all set up, though. So now, on top of that, then there was a report that came out that said one in every four black men in America were unemployed in 2016. Ooh, then on top of that, white wealth, 90% of the world's or of the nation's wealth is in the hands of white folk. 2.6% of the nation's wealth is in the hands of black folk. 2% of the 2.6% yeah. is in the hands of baby boomers with kids waiting on their ass to die so they can get the crib. Damn. The 0.6% remaining contains everybody else. Michael Jordan, Oprah, Bill Cosby. Well, maybe not Bill no more. But you in the dig? Camille Cosby. All the actors, basketball players, comedians, everybody else is in the 0.6% of African-American wealth. Shit. Okay. But we so, fuck all the hoes. Exactly. <laughs> every race. Yeah. <laughs> but I asked this question after breaking down all this information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How you going to have white financial aspirations of a black man? When the society is set up to strip black men from the ability to really provide at the same level as white men. Are you saying college is a waste, though? You motherfucking right. Uh, they I, know I, that. Uh, 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 I can't agree. No, 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 no. They know this, Jeff. Okay. Let me just let me just say this first and foremost. And you saying it's because of the grammar school. That's where it started from the grammar school. When you got your degree, what you going to do with it if you got a backbone? Ooh. I see. Now we talking. Now, yeah. See, see that's... Then, well, then why don't you wait? Oh. What? what, what? You must got a degree. If you walk no, in the oh, white no, office, I was like, you must got one. Oh, shit, like bro. Go on, Nick. Yes. With Bless. the base you ain't trying to have. Hi, I'm Charles. Your degree ain't worth a shit. Fuck. He ain't going to have you in his office. Well, if you're a man. Let me just tell you, That's I got true. a son. Bobby, let's talk about this. I got a son. Mm. He gets 50 scholarship offers. He chooses Auburn. Alabama. Shit. But the coach told me out of his own mouth, Bruce Pearl, 
Your son is a natural leader. I'm just concerned where he's going to lead the team. I said, well, what are you talking about? He don't smoke. He don't drink. He's in on time. You got a lot of other guys around here that ain't in on time. This is a guy who follows the rules, really. So why are you scared of his ability to lead? Because you got blue eyes, so that nigga didn't know what you was. No, what, what my son said was, Dad, these coaches favor the boys that don't have fathers. Absolutely. Because wow. it makes them feel like they're more part of this kid's development. Well, the clay's still wet. Oh. And the so, coach don't want nobody who is bold enough to question him in his presence. So let, let me hit you with this, too. All these murders is happening from the police, right? All these mur- murders is happening. This is when he got there, 2015, 2016. All these murders is happening. Bruce Pearl puts together a panel of people to talk to the team. FBI, whole bunch of people, local infor- uh, law enforcement, whole bunch of people showed up. Yeah. And he told my son, don't be afraid to talk. Well, first off, the rest of the team ain't going to talk. He is the one to talk. And when he started talking oh, shit. and started calling people out on this shit, Bruce Pearl had that look like, what the? I didn't I didn't know you was going to be questioning authority. Yes, motherfucker. That's why he had to leave Auburn. Oh, it wasn't wow. about his ability to play. Listen, oh, like wow. like Jeff said, they want wet clay. And the and the softest clay you can get right now is a boy that came from a household without a daddy. An alpha male daddy. Period. Yeah. Sure. You got to have an alpha male daddy. Bobby, you've been around this whole process. Speaking of that mic, Bobby. Oh, well... I remember when your son was in uh, high school, and um, it was almost like replaying a period of an earlier part of my life when uh, Sam Watson had a a son that played baseball. And when he um, signed with, at the time, was I think the Montreal team. It came to Washington Nationals. Mm -hmm. But anyway, when he would go to a camp, he was driving a better car than the coach in the minor leagues. And... He went all the way to AAA and set all kind of records. Then he went up to the bigs, and he hit well for the first week. And then the first time he had a little drop-off, he was back in the minor leagues. And it was all about the fact that his father was a big part of his life. And then I saw that happen to you in that same situation. And you go across the country, and you can replicate that I don't know how many times. It's so important to separate the children from their father. Richard Williams, uh, Serena and Venus' father, right. comes to mind. I love you it. know. Uh-huh. He didn't take no shit. He didn't take no shit. You know, now when they decided to go the other way with their personal life, yeah. he had already did his job. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. But mm-hmm. he don't get credit for it. No, though. he don't. I, I think the, the worst fallout that happens to young men in that position is, one, not understanding that the system does not even close to treat you. Not Never does, but not even close to treats you as an equal man unless they absolutely cannot deal without you right unless there is no the, the, the this system only fucks with the niggas they have to if they don't have to fuck with you they're not going to fuck with you too if you are not taught that as a male you probably also are not taught how to function in a system that has decided that it doesn't need you you don't know what the fuck to do. Mm. Mm. But, but, but check this out. And the numbers going to back me up on this because it's going to make motherfuckers mad. Sure. Bitches don't want their kids to be raised by a man. Woo! Bitches Woo! want their son to wow. act like them. Yes. Oh. Most of them. Yes. And the numbers back me up. So you can say, oh, Corey, you should have said that. Mm-mm. Look at the numbers. That and I ain't even talk about the numbers. Look at the attitude. The bitches want their kids to act like them. 
they put their sons in ponytails and everything they want their son to be. And you just got to hope by the time he 14, 15, he finally grabbed that belt and say, bitch, enough is enough. Right. You my you- mama, I love you. That's how, that's how you pick out the real men when that belt shit don't work no more. Right. What they do. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? But bitches is haters. You don't hear this no more. Evil witches. That's what they are. You, you don't hear this Who no more. Who hide their head when they empty garbage. You, and, fin- and, you finna go live with your daddy. You don't hear that no more. Right. Yeah, no. now that's, it's now time that, for your daddy. Wait, now, that's a different type of mama. Because that take away their money. See, back in the day, back in the day, there was a type of woman. And Corey is making a great point about bitches. He's not talking about all women. No, see he some said women. Bitches, no. yeah. He well, says bitches. No. Yes, and if you get off- if you got offended, well, fuck you, because we 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 yeah, would not talk about exactly. Back in the day, there was a type of woman that said, "You know what? You remember that movie? What was the movie with uh, Lawrence Fishburne and he was furious? Boys in, Boys in the Hood. That woman said, "Hey, man, I need you to come handle this." She dropped that boy off. Come get this boy. He was what, 10, 11? No, mm-hmm. he was in high school at that time. No, no, no. he was a little boy. He's a little he boy. was a little boy when she dropped him off? Yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. No, he, was, he was in high school. No, 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 no. no. You got to see it. The, uh-uh. Angela Bassett was his mama. Yes. So she dropped mm-hmm. him off when Trey was 10. When a girl little is little. Because little boy went and got... Um, Got arrested. You, yeah, you put so your like thing in her, yeah. and then nine months later, you had a baby. My, my baby mama called me when my daughter was about 15, talking about, you need to come get her, but I don't fuck with my baby mama. I was like, bitch, what is you calling me for? I can't, do she 15, she gonna be who she gonna be. But what see, you raise her to be, you <laughs> fucking bitch? <laughs> Call me when you die, bitch. I want. That's what I want to show up. I want to claim the body. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> hey, but yo, yo. hey, but yo. hey, yo. he make, hey, he making a real good point. Yo. My thing is, don't cast the mold that's yeah. based on bullshit. Yeah, and then call me in after it this don't experiment work. don't work. You you don't want me there when you molding this right. child into what you think is the yeah. right thing. Yeah. You want me to come in and clean the shit yeah. up after you, it's failed and then try to put, hold me to task and say, well, you ain't no good father because I had to do this. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You, you could have easily chose. consulted me on this shit. Mm. You didn't want to do it because you believe that child was yours. Right. I was around my kids where I care about their mama, bitch. That's real life. If we don't give a fuck about you, we're going to give minimal effort. And you think I'm wrong for that. But I'm not. If I don't give a fuck about you, you shouldn't even have my baby. It is against the rules of nature to love a ben? child around <laughs> their mama. You ain't supposed to love a child around their mama. You love a child through the mother. Oh, shit. You orbit around that relationship. And if it ain't nowhere to fucking land, you can't be upset because a nigga fly off. Yeah. And a baby ain't going to make him love you. No. They're no, hate hell you. no. You got to stop with that shit just because he cute and you want the baby because you know the baby's chances of being cute. Right. The fuck wrong with you? You Jump. need to step up and bitch fuck. Both of y'all. <laughs> when the baby grow up, I'm going to see what's yeah. up with him. If we can be cool, then good. But you the mother, and you took away my belief system toward your whole region. <laughs> so now you can go to hell. <laughs> How about that? You ever met a nigga like that before? Man? How about that? <laughs> Your whole region? Your whole region. region. Nigga, fuck the Midwest. <laughs> that nigga said the region. That nigga said no. the block you grew up in. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just tuning in to the voice of reason, I know you're used to hearing females Holy on shit. here speaking on it. Nigga said, fuck 86 in Woods. All Dang everybody man. around there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know you used to hear the Hilarious. ladies. But tonight is man night. We got to come in here and speak this real shit. Y'all raising little Dr. Cotton Field babies, these little boys who turn it out on the streets. We got to take the streets back as men. We have to fucking <sighs> implore young men to be responsible. A lot of times when mama always come through for them young men, they don't have a sense of figuring it out for themselves. Mm-mm. You under dig? You think 
being a good mom is providing everything he needs no. or everything he wants. Sometimes even the thing he needs in order to learn responsibility and appreciation for what he has, he got to go out and cultivate a way to get it. It's socially over breastfeeding. Wow. Socially over breastfeeding. You have breastfed that. You have socially breastfed this motherfucker till his social muscles have atrophied. Wow. And that weak motherfucker is going to maintain your basement until you die. The most <laughs> buck they eyes be. <laughs> is when they raise up on their father who's an alpha male. Oops. Oops. There That's comes the most the oops. buck they eyes be. Oops. When they realize a nigga going to fire on them on their chest for real. My son did Blah! it. Nigga. And they be like. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I be like, you responded yeah. like your mama yeah. did when I fired on our chest. <laughs> 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 it's a man game tonight. <laughs> Trying to make you a man. <laughs> Boy, I got no titty. Oh, oh shit. Hey. Oh. <laughs> hey, no, oh. hey. Hey, no oh. joke. My son oh. did it. My son tried to raise up on me. Oh, sure. The night before prom. Uh oh. Whoops. Motherfucker told me. Now, Z, I know. Oh, God. Nigga, oh. you're not finna be. You're not finna have a motherfucking hotel room. Cause I know what the night of prom is. The mm. night of prom is pussy. I ain't finna co sign my early grandbaby. Nigga, we hey nigga, we on our way somewhere. Nigga, you just signed a letter of intent to Auburn. So the nigga come to me and say, I'll be back tomorrow. Ooh. Nigga, who what? Not even asking. Nigga uh. just he just laid it flat. I'll be back tomorrow. Oh, he put his foot down? His mama was standing right there. She was like, oh, no. No. <laughs> I said, peep game, nigga. <laughs> you going to be back tonight before I originally said you was going to be back. <laughs> <laughs> now I need you back. <laughs> you might as well keep the car running. You will not relax and enjoy that vaginal liability. <laughs> I told him. Right. That you are engaging in. Because he was already with a, right. with a young lady that we was trying to separate him from. Because, right. nigga, the moment I met the right. girl's mama that he was dating at the high school, she, she still thinks she can go to the motherfucking All-Star Weekend and pick up a basketball player. She had on some motherfucking retro Jordans. The mama. I said, hey, this, oh, shit. this ain't this ain't, this ain't ain't a good situation, my nigga. <laughs> right. <laughs> Round the way That pussy. girl mama pussy on the internet, son. Right. <laughs> Round the way, pussy, where a young man's dreams go to die. Nigga. So I told him, nigga, what time did I say you were supposed to be back? He said 1 o'clock. I said, your ass will be back here at 11.45. Damn! Not even a he whole hour? Like, he was like, damn. I mean, I can't go out and do I said, who you talking to, nigga? Yeah. Uh -uh. And then he kept getting louder. Ooh. Ooh. And then I uh -oh. snatched the nigga by his neck, and his mother jumped in. Ah, no! Then, But he saw in my face... How many men was standing there? That I wasn't bullshit. That nigga popped up off that couch. Now, mind you, his knee wasn't fully healed. <laughs> that nigga popped up off that couch and ran out the house down the block with no shoes on. Because he knew. This nigga ain't playing with me. Mm -mm. I'm standing here in front of the truth right But now. sometimes... Good mamas know how to stand down and in that situation. That's got to happen. That's a rite of passage for him to recognize, number one, this nigga my number one advocate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if this nigga is so passionate about me not doing some shit, I need to acknowledge that this nigga's looking out for me. Do you understand? No. I had to, nigga, that motherfucker took off. He was gone for a couple hours. Mother, you ran him off. I said, the nigga be back. He got to eat. Yeah, he be back. He ain't got no shoes on. So he going far. She jumped in the car and was driving around the neighborhood. <laughs> and you was watching Sports Center? I, I said, the nigga be back. Be back. Don't do all this extra pampering and baby. This process got to happen. Yes. Come on, y'all. Y'all know is, what I'm talking about. This is why I say the white male 
is not on the alpha male shit the black male is. That's why you see all these white men having babies at 58, 59, 60. What you going to do when he 15 and you 75? Mm. What you going to do when he, I believe a young male is always supposed to bleed this. Boy, don't make me show you how many men standing here. I will slap the fucking shit out of you and be able to stand under that and understand this nigga not playing with me. Nigga, if you looking for your liver pills, that's not he ain't going <laughs> to. not. This nigga right here got to take his insulin in 28 minutes. If you say something else, I'm going to beat your mama ass in front of you to show you you're not a man. <laughs> Because if you was a man, you'd be able to stop You'd be able to stop this You'd be able to shit. protect your mama. <laughs> about to sacrifice your mama oh, to show shit. you what you need to know. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, I love you, baby. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I got to show this nigga uh, something. This is for our <laughs> son. <laughs> What kind of man he gonna be if he don't see this? <laughs> Leg house uh, like Prince. Ask to be motherfucker. Man. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Well, he got off the bike. Oh, right. Yeah. I saw mom Never on the end of the block. Have any fun. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I, and then, but Prince, but Prince, he got he got his look back. He got his look back. He got his look back when he when he chimed in on the nigga and. Hey, I saw mom at the end of the block. And he was like, yeah, so any idea how she got that way? Mm-hmm. You ever been married? You gonna get married? I don't know. <laughs> Never get married. He nigga. ain't do shit. <laughs> he didn't do shit. His no. daddy slapped. But he came back, though. Hey, his daddy slapped taste buds out of he his was, mouth. He was coming to look for him, but he, his daddy shot himself in the head. His daddy would have been like, I will whoop your high heel blouse <laughs> wearing ass. Yes. You stretch pants, nigga. Uh, you gonna you gonna break more than one nail, fucking with me. Hey, you gonna, you gonna lose an earring. You gonna, you gonna wash this wound in the rain, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You come you, over here. Yeah. You he and, watch this movie. I'm gonna fuck up one of your purple pumps. Hilarious. You, Hilarious. you and your mama nigga, you share stupid. the same closet, nigga. <laughs> How right. the fuck you gonna come here and ask me about me and your mama's Thank relationship? You. When I hit your ass, you gonna say, ah! Right? <laughs> you don't want that. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Dash Talk X. I'm Zoe Williams of the Voice of Reason radio show that airs here three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 5 to 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. This is the Voice of Reason. If you're just tuning in, normally we have females on our panel, but tonight... Man, the brothers had to come out and and represent in a major way Corey Holcomb, Ray Grady, Bobby Glanton Smith, and of course, Jeff Brown. Tonight's topic, mansions, men building and destroying on the current state of manhood. Sure. And, And it's important, man. A lot of times, women's aggressive nature towards men has been shielded. By society at large. Mm. A lot of people don't understand that the most violent gender in intimate relationships are women. See, the research from the CDC breaks it down very clearly. Women's violence towards men is called moderate violence. And what is considered moderate violence? Punching Kicking, slapping, pushing, throwing things, and the coup de gras, spitting. Women do this more to men than men do it to women. Now, because men are bigger, men's category of violence is like the heavyweight category. Women are flyweights or welterweights or whatever, but men are heavyweights. So what they say is... When men get violent with women, men break women. What about big bitches? So now what you exactly. So now what you have is a double standard that says men are supposed to take violence from women mm-hmm. and never reciprocate. And we have a culture of women that know this and put it under what is known as button pushing. Now, when you talk to women, 
They'll tell you, oh, I push buttons. Mm-hmm. I push yeah, buttons. Yeah. And I think that's, that's, most that's, chicks know who to fucking play with. Now talk about now it. I mean, you know, it, I used to be married, and uh, me and Shorty, we never, we never got along, but she knew I wasn't going to play with her, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, certain people just, you could just feel a spirit. You know what I'm saying? So, I was raised to, if you raise your hand up, male or female, I'm going to defend it at all costs and go at your ass with extreme prejudice. So, who give a fuck about, yeah, who gives a fuck now, okay? Now, that doesn't mean if you, you know, when chicks used to put the fingers in the the man head and you, you get about six of them. I give you six of these. The next time... I ain't going to slap you. I'm going to grab you by your blouse. Remember, bitches used to wear a blouse back the, the in the blouse. 90s. blouse, yes, the blouse. You grab her by the blouse. It was and right you kinda, on. You, yeah. <laughs> it feels silk. Yeah, but it, it ain't silk, but yeah. it's right on. You grab it and you throw her on the couch and you walk over where she got to look up at you. So you're looking down and now you, you, hey, look, stop playing. Now call your goofy ass brother because <laughs> I'm not going to beat the shit out you. I'm going to take right? it out on him. No, no, but he got to protect you. Let me fight a nigga that's going to give me a sure fight. It's, I've always been respectful, and I sure. think most of the time, chicks, when they, her experience growing up wasn't like my experience. My old man, even though he was the ruler of the crib, but he let my old girl, because they came from Mississippi together when he was 15. This role reversal in that situation was the daddy was the handpack. I, I didn't even know what hand peck was oh, yeah, until yeah, yeah, yeah. so when I saw that I was like oh well she not gonna eat and feed him so I just think that you know I think people forget when you're in a marriage you are with six it's six motherfuckers in that bed yeah. you know what I mean by six motherfuckers the wife she got what her daddy did and her mama did mm. and then the verse is the husband what his mama did and his father did so there's six motherfuckers in the bedroom. Six people. Mm. So now when everybody figured out that, okay, I ain't going to do this. And then he's like, well, I'm not supposed to. Well, you supposed to cook. And she supposed to clean. And then a whole bunch of all this other shit. So all that does is create a ton of tension Mm. because they weren't shown. And a lot of times us, we not even looking at the the bitch mental capacity. We're looking at the. How thick she is. Right. Arm piece whores. But if this bitch don't know how to wow. get the broom and sweep out the corner dirt, right. that's the broad you don't fuck with. Right. Because if she want to be heard, and if you a dude that's like, I ain't really with all that talking. Fuck all that talking. That goes back to what Corey said yeah. earlier. Certain, certain, people just, certain people just not into w- bullshit. Women that's who all. respect men yeah. Yeah. also respect their thresholds. All day long. Yeah. You know this nigga got a boundary? Why you so curious about seeing the other side of it? <laughs> they curious. Know. The ones that do want the chaos. Yeah. 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 They yeah. don't want peace. Good. They witches. They want bad. Every woman who listening to this, I want you to just go to the mirror right now and tell me, what do you see? Are you proud of it? Tell the truth once in a lifetime. Quit lying to that motherfucker in the mirror. Yeah. You're not proud of it. And yeah. it's because I'm a big, you, beautiful woman. Right, you okay, put yeah. what you feel in front of what you were supposed to do. So your life ain't shit. Your kids ain't shit. They done told you you ain't shit at a certain age. Mm. Now calm down, shut the fuck up, and get behind a real one. And, and let That's me, all let, you got left. And, and let me say this, because we, we all out here in, in the entertainment shit. The new entertainment shit is the new mom and pop stores for black folks. Hmm. Hmm. Because we don't have any jobs. We don't really. Right. The dinosaurs, the companies are like, fuck it, let's take these hardworking machinist jobs, these industrial jobs, and we send them overseas. So when they gave us this platform of, it started with bootlegging. I knew then it was going to be an issue. Once everybody stopped bootlegging, I said, okay, this shit is going to turn into something. How do we. How does this shit turn into a manifestation for all of us? Mm-hmm. Then Master P shown, and then they shown a lot of other situations. So when it came down to comedy, Corey, what everybody went, they do what they do to make money. Mm-hmm. The broad that you with, 
she got to be with it. Your journey, that's her journey now. Yes. A lot of chicks not don't understand a, that. But not unless it's illegal. Because now, 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 now but hold If on. it's illegal, she going to be with you. Yeah, if she can no, no, I'll, I'll no, yeah, I get until it. You, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Until you get caught out there. So it's, it's, it's then the. Then she back on the market. So, but if you look at it, if the dude is really trying to do something for himself, you already know the, the dirt comes when we outside after 10 to 12 o'clock at night, right? Right, right, yeah, right. I fuck bitches at lunchtime. See? <laughs> now, now hold on. Now, that's some, geez, that's, some, that's some cool shit he just said, but you know who do shit like that? The chicks. Women. Mm. The chicks do that type of shit. They don't have to stay out. We'll stay all night with the bitch. Mm -mm. But the broad, go ahead, pop, 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 get the fuck out of here. Right. Tell that nigga shit, see that nigga at the end of the month. Yeah. Wow. Maybe. Well, Grady's saying it's some real shit, but I don't stay out all night with bitches. <laughs> I, when I am around you, you have a window of fucking opportunity. Yeah. And if I'm not fucking you after, okay, fuck it, I'll be for real. If I ain't fucked you after an hour of being in your presence, I will literally just walk out. And I'm not going to tell you where I'm going or nothing. Because I got <laughs> bitches in this area. Talk that shit, man. Every bitch who has them over, I, I need you to know, it's a bitch around here I fuck with too. <laughs> I'm not finna wait and see what you're going to do. You know why I'm here. You see, I got this $100 waiting on you when I'm through. <laughs> what? <laughs> I listen to you talk for 20, 30 minutes because uh, some bitches got to say something. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's, just, it's been an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the bitches that you only get here from. You be like, look, bitch, you got to start trying to get your mind right. Yeah. To do this. I've really if been you, hooping, you bitch. Get <laughs> oh, you got hoop nuts? <laughs> and it, and, it, and it's, it's fucked. I don't say it's fucked up, so, but put it the what they say, white women go to college to find a husband. Mm -hmm. Sisters go to college to, to get the degree. One. To live without one. Oh, wow. To live without one and to get the degree. Mm. So what we left with, mm. selling dope, learning how to hustle. Mm. Right. Learning how to hustle. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Learning how to hustle. We have never learned how to sell dope. Ever. No, no, but I'm but yeah, yeah, the yeah. The Asians learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Irish learn. Yeah. The Italians learn. Yeah. The Jews learn. Yeah. Niggas are the only ones that ain't figured out that the dope game is something to get out of, All not day. stay into. Wow. Wow. You know why? Uh, no yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh uh. I disagree, bro. You you know you know why they you know why they can't stay out of it, right? Mm -mm. Cause we for some reason we like turmoil. Mm. There. There you go. I'll Remember buy that. that. We I'll like turmoil. That. Who is we? Black people. Black and men. Black people. Men. I'm saying men. Okay. Men well, like no, turmoil. No, no, no. Well, we we Because if we did if we didn't, we wouldn't like violent sports. Right. We wouldn't watch We're, MMA. Okay. I'm just saying men, yes. we we hunters, man. We don't give a fuck. We like, nigga, this is a cat and mouse game. Right. This is a cat and mouse game. My job is to be legal. Your job is to catch me, nigga. That's Sugar Hill. That's it. That's all it is. It's a, it's a game. That's the movie Sugar Hill. Yeah, it's a well, game. Well, you got to remember what poverty has done to black men. Yeah. Now, remember, you live in a capitalist society. A capitalist society is based on accumulating wealth or things. Yeah. So I'm going to prevent you from doing that. Why? Because the more you accumulate, the more <clears> you're <throat> considered a man. Mm -hmm. Having, being mm -hmm. able to produce, being I'm able to. That's you, what you I was trying to say. The competitive nature in human beings yeah. will have you doing all kind of shit right. Right. to yeah. be in the motherfucking race. That's right. right. And the only reason niggas sell drugs, in my opinion, is to stay competitive. Because motherfucker don't want to be out here fucked up, not yeah. doing, not having shit. Right. Okay. I don't know motherfuckers well, it's who, about the art of oh, I got to do this. They just do yeah. it because this is the way I can do it? Yeah. Right. Fuck it, I'm going to go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you, so what do you say if somebody said, man, I'm trying to get off the street court. Can you show me how to work a camera? Do you think he would have the same hustle to be like, look, nigga, it's a dope way to walk around with a thousand, five thousand in your pocket. And you just showing them how to work a camera or work a board. Right. It's, some, it's some legitimate bread. But that's, but, but that's what we supposed to do. That's, that's right. what man. That's what that's, that's a man. That's shit. a man yeah. shit. Or yeah. take them garbage bags full of hundred dollar bills. Uh -huh. Go on and move to South Carolina and buy a neighborhood. 
Just buy a fucking neighborhood. Just go, all right, I or got Detroit. this money. Or Detroit. Or Detroit. Yes. Yeah, yeah Detroit's Compete a better example. The, thank you. Yeah. Compete with the Chinese who are making Detroit the biggest Chinatown outside of China. Right? That's real well, shit. Well, yeah, that's real that's shit. That's for yeah. real. Man. Let me tell y'all something, man. All y'all motherfuckers who think y'all finna buy up all this property that's and all shit, say, you yeah. did wrong. They gonna raise the taxes so you, you gonna have to get rid of it because they know if niggas own it. You gotta right. holler at that's me real. after. That's uh, real. You gotta holler at me after the show because I got I already got some property in Detroit. And well, 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 I enjoy it while you got it. Huh? <laughs> enjoy it while you no, got it. I challenge. I challenge any of the motherfuckers who hate this show that listen to it to find my property. I got 10 buildings in Detroit right fucking now in the middle of all that Asian shit. Get down black people to Detroit with your money, but not as singular people, as a right. group, right. Like a corporate group that buys uh, uh that buys your, your real estate. Now, now Jeff, is, Jeff is right about this because I brought somebody onto the Zola Morning Show that does that. Sure. You remember the brother I brought on? Yeah. He had like 10, 15 fucking buildings. And it ain't, I ain't, you it's ain't cheap, and it's cheap. But, but let's not, un, let's not underestimate the system of white supremacy. Oh, because sure. they don't mind moving the goalpost once you find where the where the oh, motherfucker is. And that's what Corey talking about. That's of what course. Corey is saying. I feel that. I feel that. Bobby, jump ahead, in there. Bobby. You know, uh, I saw the other day where <clears throat> T.I. has bought a lot of property he in did. Atlanta. Yeah. Yes. And I was speaking to a brother that I've known for a long time named Wendell Stimney. He's the president of the National Association of Minority Contracts. He also has an office in Atlanta. The objective nowadays, man, is to put pieces together that fit. Because, yes, mm. you're going to deal mm. with the, the, the value of the, the property going up. But if you got enough money flowing around in the community and we finally get that, mm -hmm. you know, that feeling of like, okay, the only way y'all getting us out of here, y'all got to kill us. Because we have a sense of ownership. And then we start spreading wealth with each other because he can, he can buy the home. Or he can go out and get some Mexicans to rehab them. Or he can train some young brothers. How but they acquire the skill that'll How go a lifetime. But we got to change what we value in order to unify. Young black men value being fly and value being in competition with other brothers. Yeah. Because, the, because yeah, yeah. of the system we yeah, live in. Yeah, yeah. This system has <clears throat> said to, to black men... The only way you can show your power is by shaming, demeaning, and clowning another black man. Or a woman. Or a woman. Yeah. So look at look look at certain games. In rap, battle. We gotta battle each other and talk mm -hmm. shit to each other. Right? Okay. In the pimp game. I got more hoes. Yeah. I got more hoes than your you. Your hoe chose me. Your hoe chose me. Yeah. Again, in the education game. I got That's a degree. I got a degree. And I'm working. It, it, nigga, where I work validates my importance over you. Nigga, I work at Microsoft. Yeah. But again, right. white people ain't running around banging on each other about well, what degree so, they got. That's what I'm saying. Because the they got it. There we go. Talk about it, You got to come through them to get it. So until we get a generation of young men Who's willing to die for their principles? Right. That's we are in the fucking BET game. Cause right. I, you know, is they bought BET from that brother. Got never BET is the most suckiest channel on TV. They got all sucker shit. Right. All sucker shit on BET. All Show me a program that's going to help us on BET. Because they one. had them bitches on there talking about voting. Michelle Obama, all them motherfuckers. Them motherfuckers is trying to be cool with the other side and ain't nobody calling them on that. That's I'm true. a bad guy for saying that. But the truth is, the reason they say you don't want them to take your power in voting, they know their power ain't shit. Right. They just, I'd rather be down with them. Right, They'd be down with all these motherfuckers that they got shit. Because the that's work the is winning harder. team, right? The yeah. work is the word that the the dirtiest. Them motherfuckers should not be allowed to run with us. The dirtiest the real four letter word. Wow. The dirtiest four letter word for black people right now is easy. Woo, easy. Wow. What about I, I compare it to this? Because I, I I tell you what you're saying. Hmm. The worst word, four letters, hope. Hope, thank you. Hope is for I shitty planners. I do not allow my children to say that word in my fucking house. 
You do not. You are not allowed to use the word hope in my house because hope always implies that some shit is coming from somewhere else. Mm. And it ain't going to never come. Hope, never. Hope is for motherfuckers who do not know how to plan. Hope Real is shit. for gay niggas who paint the White House the gay colors. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but put it like this. Ah! As all of us in here, ah. do, you, do y'all think... Well, Bobby, I'm going to say it like this. Do you think that shit will ever see fruition where we can all be like, we want to shop with each other? Well. Because I go like this, right? I went to the uh, Dewa, the, um, the um, Muslim oil store. Oh, on Crenshaw. Dewa. Oh, Dewa. 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 I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Dewa. Dewa. I go in there and I'm like, Jesus. Jesus. this shit is, is packed. I'm like, you know, with, with, with oils and, and, you yes. know, and items, things for purchase. And I said, mm-hmm. okay, they supporting this shit over here. Yes. Then when I looked at the, the Asian, the Chinese store, the beauty shop, I was like, why the fuck? Okay. Niggas even know that this is they shit. They come in and they watch us. And they say, oh, you know what? Niggas are dumb. They spend trillions of dollars with everybody else outside their community. And you can still tell a nigga, hey, you know our money stay in our community for six hours, right? Right. You know in the Jewish community it stay for 27 days, right? Well, how about that? You know in the Asian it stay there 18 days, right? Come on, keep going. You know going. in the, the Hispanics it stay in there 15 days, right? Keep Why going. the fuck you dumbass niggas? Keep spending your money with these motherfuckers that don't even like you. Because the product equates to our self-esteem. Damn. That's the fucked up part. <laughs> that hurts, though. You know. Yeah. But that's it's supposed to hurt. Gucci, Louis. Yeah. All that shit is day shit. But it makes me look who dope. I am. It makes me look like all this other shit you niggas struggling with. I'm not. I'm okay. I'm fine. Nigga, you live right over there. <laughs> if I rob you tonight, <laughs> now yeah. I'm okay and you ain't. Mm. So what the fuck does this any of this shit you carrying around really fucking mean? You know what the scary part of all this shit really is? And it's something I live with and I know this is what has to happen in order for things to get fixed. What's what's that? Because like Grady was saying, why niggas is not knowing to do this and, you know, all this shit? What fixes it is when all this shit burns down and there's no other way but the right way. Yes. When bitches don't have a choice. There is no glue store, bundle store. When niggas, it ain't no joy. We just out here fucked up. With knowing each, with each other, we gotta survive. Right. right until we get there, and I'm not talking about some shit where they put you in a prison because it's still a way out. Right. No, we gotta really be fucked up. Global meltdown. That's when we will begin to Thank realize you. you ain't got time for that shit no more. Right, <laughs> motherfucker. Right. It's a million dead bodies piled up right here, and the only reason we ain't one of them is luck because right. they done came at us. Right. When the white man show his hand and really show you what his plan is, and he's smart because he ain't did it yet. No. But right. this America shit, this shit ain't gonna be here forever like they think. Bruh, they bruh, finna uproot bruh. all this shit. In five so, years, this will not be America. Right. All you bitches who think that you supposed to go back. I'm not talking about American women. I'm talking about the African bitches who bought out all the skin lightning cream in <laughs> Africa. Well, they didn't even have enough of this shit. I'm talking about everybody. You really got to see who the devil is before you understand. Damn, we ain't got time to bullshit. They done killed most of us. Yes. You know what's crazy to me? They zapped me dead because I had a flu shot. That's what niggas got to realize. Right. Damn. Niggas with their flu shots thinking that they getting ahead of a flu. You can't get ahead of the flu. You motherfucker. Yeah, right. What the fuck is a flu shot? That's like me shooting Some you with more a tw- flu. That's like me shooting you with a That's like me shooting you with a 22 so you're Im- immune to a 357. Get the fuck yeah, out of here with that shit. Yeah. Hey, and I'm gonna tell true. and I'm gonna tell you right now. This is a frightening thought. Just listening to the, to the brothers build on what we're talking about right now. This is a frightening thought that black people here in America we're closer as slaves than we are today. That's because the enemy was clearer. You didn't have. That's, to, you do didn't you have to think worry about, about that. that? I want you to weigh that out. 
The enemy was doing this and stringing your folks up on the, in a tree, so you knew exactly who he was. You had sundown towns, so you knew exactly where you were. You La Jolla, color, California. You had, you had, La Co- you, you had a, a sundown town. Yes, color, yes, yes. Color, colored only fountains, so you know who you are. You had the Ku Klux Klan riding down the street on horses instead of sitting in banks, bankrupt in SNL, so you know who you are. Yeah. Wow. They don't know who the enemy is because they sit next to them and they say, hi, Bob, and they let you talk or talk with them at the water cooler. So you, you, you are somehow thinking that that particular group of individuals is not on the other team. And every time you bring up your own team, you are somehow every time I bring up the issues of black people, I am somehow militant because I don't want to include all people. All all people is is code talk for fuck black people. Yeah, that's wow. all it is. Because it's almost like a white person can't say, "Oh, well, Jeff Brown is racist." Like, whoa, whoa, you can't say he's racist. No, you can't even fathom the shit that we grow up with. Mm. You probably can't call me a racist because as a white man, yeah, most white people are not yeah. racist. Yeah. Most white people don't have any power. Racism is not yelling "nigga" from a moving car. No, not at all. Racism is Flint water. Right. Racism is Chicago on the south fucking side dropping guns off on the trains over on the east side. Yeah. That's, racist. That's racist. Racism right. is anybody who don't speak against it. Wow. How about it? That's wow. Martin Luther King wow. right there. Mm. Bobby. Wow. They, you can't say that. Bobby. After that. Where you go? Where you go so, now? So, so, Bobby, I got to go to the elder in the room because now I'm looking towards the future. My son is 21. And I'm still coaching. I'm still mentoring. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, I didn't have none of the shit I'm giving this nigga. What's his nickname? No. no, no I didn't have any of that. No, I had a like un- I no like brand new like N E W. I thought you were gonna go with the uh, the, the young now, lion. Now, let me that's let me just say I I had a uncle <laughs> who every time I see my uncle. He would be considered a baby boomer, right? He's in that age group. He owns homes and, you know, property. Right. Every time I see him, though, he feels bad because he says I couldn't do as much as I wanted to. He said, number one, because you're not you you weren't my son. You weren't in my household. (sighs) So he was like, I did what I could, the little I could, but I wanted to do more. And I didn't have enough bread to break you off more than the piece that I was able to when you was young. So my thing now is how do we avoid raising those kids who are on the outskirts like that and we create these wild ones? We need to start finding a way to mentor the ones like me that was on the fringe. How do we reach out to them, Bobby? How do we get those kids involved? First of all, out of necessity. Mm. Because the option. Mm. I like that. Speaking to the mic, Bobby. The option is unconscionable. Because I've been guilty of that at certain stages of my life, chasing it, and then looking at them young brothers, look at them boys. Man. Sure. And then just leaving them where they are. And as, as I've grown older, it's easier for me to say, look, what time I have left on this planet, it goes back into the young ones. Um, I'm having an event in Tennessee next Thursday night with David Banner, and it's called An Evening with the Young Ones. Mm. Because Murfreesboro, Tennessee is about 180,000 people now. The county is about, Rutherford County is about 350,000 people. When I was coming up, it was 10,000 folks, black and white, that's it. But prosperity has attracted the streets. Memphis, Mm -hmm. Chicago, Mm -hmm. they build Nissan cars and trucks down there. Yeah, they are. And so we got a whole nother population of people in my hometown. But Mm -hmm. over where I'm from, State Street, Reed Alley. Shit, it's still a place you get your head peeled day or night. And the young ones, I've seen enough of them, include my great nephew, get off the path. He did three years in prison, and he woke up one day and he said, God damn, I'm 24 years old, and I'm still ducking. Wow. You know, because he done did that time, and the cats he, that admire him, he's looking at them like, y'all don't know what it's like, man, to put yourself in situations where you behind those walls for three years. So when you ask that question, though, I ain't got no choice, man. At this stage, I have a granddaughter, man. She's about five months old now, and I'm like, what's she going to have to work with? Wow. Shit. So 
there's a necessity, man. And I'm working with some cats in Atlanta and in Chicago because the brothers in Chicago done moved their game down south. And now they looking at forming legitimate businesses because they got grandkids that they don't want to get caught up in this mess. Wow. You know? So we just got to start filling in these gaps, man. Wherever you can make a difference in a young person's life, take advantage of it, not for altruistic reasons, out of necessity. Mm-hmm. Wow. Because I remember Corey went to Chicago a few years ago, and he came back and said, man, even the cast that's in the streets is telling me to get out of the streets because it ain't that kind of party no more, man. No, it's, it's you not. know? So it's just one it's one, one child at a time, one neighborhood at a time, out of necessity, man, because nobody gives a shit about what happens to us until we do. Yeah. Um, man. Hey, check Corey, it out. Go ahead, bro. So, yeah. What what well, I th- what well, what Bobby was saying was when I told him, man, these niggas who still in the streets, they tell you it ain't no place to hang out. Mm-hmm. It ain't mm-hmm. you can't you can't walk from the lounge you grew up going to, three four blocks down the street. You need somebody to walk you down there so they see one of these niggas who are out here all the time <laughs> is with you. They be like, oh, he cool. okay, it's that bad out here, right? But what I'm saying is, I want to tell the world, I'm on deck. I ain't part of the solution as far as it go with like building in America. I don't believe in America. Uh, if I was to build something out, I would build something in this world. It wouldn't be in America. I, I, I start over home. in a whole new country. Yes, sir. Cape town, Africa somewhere. Yes, I don't sir. know what's out there. I just don't believe in America. Cause I believe they finna blow it all up. I watched what happened to the people who own homes in new Orleans when they wanted to gangster that property. Uh, I yeah, happened to be doing a broke. show out there, yeah. and they was just telling people, if you're not here by this day to claim your property, it will be taken. And I, I know that they can write a law as it go to take what you own. On some right. Commonwealth That shit. ain't me trying to be on no downer stuff. It's just I don't watch people put everything they have into property, and it just get taken somehow by a law that they create as it go. Sure. That don't mean you don't buy property or whatever. So I'm just saying, me, man, I ain't going to even lie to you. I'm down for when it's real. I'm not down to march. Thank you. I'm not down to protest. None I'm down when it jump off. Because it's going to jump off. Yes, sir. Right. And, I know and, you think you can keep voting your way into peace and, and marching your way into peace. Yeah. No. And, it's coming to your door. And uh, here's a great that's point. That's when you see who I am. Yes. Here's a great point to back up Corey. Just like in the educational system. See, Education used to be for the expansion of intelligence, Mm -hmm. the expansion of mental consciousness and capacity. It ain't about that no more. Mm -mm. No. This is indoctrination. Sure. So while the black man is under attack here in America, they'll put out an article that says 2.5 million black men are doing really well. Black men in America are doing well. Now, here's the hustle on the article. When you see the article, it's a picture of young black men that are college graduates to send the message that 2.5 million young black men are doing well in America's system today. The ones that squeak through. But when you read the article, you find these niggas is talking about the youngest Baby boomers who are 50 something years old, born in like 60 something. Right. So they're talking about an entirely different demographic. They're talking about black men who came from families that have households. Because remember back in the day, you only needed one job to to own a house and send everybody to school. And Mm -hmm. you know the When the dollar was stronger and you only needed one income. They talking about them people and they talking about the youngest of those people. But the deception is they'll put a picture. These motherfuckers 66 years old. But they'll put a picture of, a of young kids, brothers, graduating from college. Wow. And they say, oh, 2.5 million black men in America are doing well. Understand, propaganda is a part of this country. So why wouldn't there be propaganda associated with the voting process? If they're going to lie about Jesus, why wouldn't they lie about the ballot? 
You can't trust your mama. Her eyelashes and hair's fake whenever she hit the streets. That's that you can't even trust her. She don't trust herself. <laughs> and nobody really think of it like that. No. Your mama started to doubt in your eye. With her lack of belief in herself. Okay. Let's and then a motherfucker damn. be mad when a motherfucker got a bitch that don't wait for don't, when a motherfucker got a bitch that don't wear fake eyelashes and got fake eyes. Let's hair. really look at it. They'll tell you something wrong with you. No, <laughs> this shit is real over here. Let's, that's <laughs> fucked up. That this the real shit, now. Nah. Let's let's really look at voting. Mm. Go ahead, Jeff. I, I really wanna I really wanna call voting out into the middle of the street. We have had the right to vote since August of nineteen sixty five. I was two months old. We still have the same fucking problems. I'm 53. If somebody could tell me in that time, what bill, what law, what initiative was put forth ever that helped black people specifically with black people's problems, not poor people, because that's, that's when you get into white people, not indigent people, that's when you get into white people, not, not crippled people, that's when you get into white people, black people specifically. Can anybody tell me in 53 fucking years when there was ever any initiative that said, hey, we fuck black people over here, so this particular thing, not the projects, this particular thing, not food stamps, this is for black people. I'll wait. Your vote is associated with hope. Oh, yeah. Well, then there you go. There you back to that. Yeah, I sure hope this passes. Bobby. Real quickly, voting <laughs> without. And that wasn't shot at you, Uncle Bobby. No, no, I'm no, just... no, 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 no. Uh, I'm just saying voting is a part of the process. But if you don't understand the elements that make it either work for you or against you, I can't argue with folks say they don't vote. But it's because it takes more than that. You got to know who you voting for and how his agenda or her agenda is consistent with what you want to see done with your tax dollars because that's what they're using is your money against you because you didn't think the process through. But that goes you back never, to my point. You'll never vote for nobody. Get, get on the mic. Interest. Get on the mic, Corey. Nobody who has your best interest will be a candidate. Will be within spittings. <laughs> You're closer to Jupiter. <laughs> but, you but, voting for they man. Trust me. Yes. Whatever you vote. But this goes back to the voting <laughs> process. Yeah. But this goes back to the voting process being set up just like the church. Patriotism is a form of religion. So guess what? You take your concerns that only God can fix to the priest because he's the intercessor for God. Wow. You take your concerns for the community to the politician. Look here. Now, the only way that can work is if the priest and the politician are rooted in a real connection to either God or morality for uh, the me. politician. Real On that shit. tip, man, if you if you run for for office in most white communities, if you don't do what you said you was gonna do, they got a thing they call recall. And they did it in, in, in the state of California years ago when they took uh, Arnold, Davis. Yeah, Arnold Schwarzenegger became governor because that motherfucker didn't do what he was supposed to do. And they said, oh, wait a minute. We ain't got to wait no four years. We're going to get this petition going two days. But that's white people with white wealth. Yes, you're no, discussing. I'm just saying. You're discussing again, Uncle Bob. I'm talking apples and oranges in this way. Black people have to at least before we do anything else, exercise the options. We have never, you know, said, you know what? Nigga, we elected your black ass, and now you hiding money in the refrigerator and got 10 holes you going with, and we still can't get the lights on in this motherfucker. Okay. Nigga, your ass is out of here. Okay. Oh, you made the mistake of believing in the system. In the first place. How then, about, then you got to move, baby. Okay, well, well, here's an option. Please explain to me what this particular function, and you talked about some of your cats a couple of weeks ago who did something like this. Please explain to me what voting has to do with this. We're going to get some people that got some money, black people, black dollars. We're going to go over into the hood and buy this property that's just burnt up, got couches and bullshit on it. We're going to get all these couches and bullshit out the way. We're going to go get uh, the big mama that grow cabbage, the big mama that go grow greens, the big mama that grow onions and whatnot. And we're going to make this a big fucking farm that grows organic food for the people around the way. And you know who's going to guard it? The 60s. What does that have to do with who voted for whom and how hard is that to make happen?
I, give me 30 seconds to answer that question. Yes, sir. All you have to add to that equation that you just proposed. Yes. Is a candidate that you elected for that district, and he going to have to make sure that the tax dollars that have been going everywhere except there, or he's out. Because that's the only thing missing in the equation that you just talked about. But, Bobby, that's The goes- whole nation voted for Obama for the most part. Thank you. I mean, like the man won the election before lunchtime. Show me what happened for black people. Show me. I know what happened. That's why we can't make that mistake again. We can't ever have oh, another no. nigga. Oh, oh, Uncle Bobby. I ain't talking about none of these candidates, man. Uncle I'm not Bobby. talking about nobody that has ran Name me one. right now. Okay. Uncle but Bobby. Anybody who down for black people will be murdered by the Illuminati. You will not be somebody who makes a big difference. The fact that Zoe, me, David Banner, Tariq Nasheed. Tariq. Your lives are at stake for speaking up for black people. When it get big enough, somebody going to come tap you on the shoulder. Thank they you. already did it to Zoe. They going to come tap you on the shoulder and tell you what you can and cannot do. The only way you get to run for president or any type of these pol- political offices is if you down to play ball with them Thank people. Thank you. Uncle Bobby, you looking for... Because they kill everybody who speak up for black you're people. You're looking for... With that Uncle Bobby, I didn't live through those Uncle assets. Bobby, Hold you're, up, you're looking for a clean fish in a dirty bowl. Wow. There Let are the no clean in. fish in a dirty bowl. Well, you better get one. They, they knocked on Zodo first because of how he talk. Really? That's why they ain't came in me. Because they like, oh, who's this dumb nigga? He just but talking I love to the it. niggas. I'm right. under the radar. But <laughs> the way Zo talked right. made them people knock on his door. And when he told me they knocked on his door, I wasn't shocked. I was like, yeah, because you sound like you can lead them motherfuckers. I'm not trying to lead the motherfuckers that's trying to go through college. I'm trying to lead them people on the, on street, the street because that's where the numbers are. All day. Okay. All day. Uh, I got a question. I got a question. I got a question. Uh, uh, here's a place you can go, and I need everybody's help in this room. Black Friday. This Black Friday, I have something called Black, uh, the day after Thanksgiving, Black to the Future. I have promoters involved. I have uh friends of mine in the uh, uh, law enforcement that are involved we are going to on friday this friday after thanksgiving in la we're going to get two tour buses we're going to fill them with black people and we are going from black business to black business all day they're gonna have missiles pointed at the <laughs> motherfucking <bus. laughs> <laughs> 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 hey, hey, hey. we get rid of all those positive niggas with one button well, if we must die, how about it? Let's go but, out swinging. But Bobby, that, what you just said right there, the what mic. you just said right there is profound. You said if we must die, because you asked me where we gonna go. Let me tell you something. I don't have the answers to everything, but I know I'm not going the way of the coward or the way of the Thank wrong you. way. I'm Thank taking you. my heart and I'm leading with real intent yes. and and good intentions. I ain't gonna and die quiet. And that's where we got to go. Because Obama, Obama painted the White House like the homosexual colors. <laughs> We saw Obama walking in the garden with Jamie Foxx. That's all you need to see. If you, right, if, you, right. if, you, if you still don't get it, you ain't going to get it. Ah, hey, listen. You've been listening to the voice of reason on Dash Talk X. Unfortunately, we are at the end of the show. I want to shout out the Super Chat. There were a lot of people in there that were supporting. And let me just say, man, the bottom line is support. It's unity. It's respect for what everybody is trying to build and do. And again, we can extrapolate meaning by working with each other as opposed to seeking what the society has to offer as the symbol of success. Come on. Come on. So all I'm saying is, man, I'm here to promote anybody. I'm here to support anybody that's trying to do something positive in the community. I wanted to bring these brothers in here to speak on some real shit about black masculinity and how we're affected in the community. And I just want to say thanks for everybody tuning in. Thanks for everybody supporting the channel. Yes, sir. Thanks for everybody who called in. I know we didn't get to the phone lines, but at some point... If the if the if the stars align, we'll do this again. I want to say thank Ray uh, Ray Grady Zod. <laughs> I want to thank my big, <laughs> I want to say thanks to my big bro Corey Holcomb Zod, the elder. <laughs> Neil! <laughs> Before Zod. Oh God, no Zod. I want to thank my elder. 
Bobby Glanton Smith, and I want to thank my co-host, with guy ride with me all the time, Come on, man. Jeff Brown. Come on. We're about to bounce. I appreciate everybody for tuning in. Zoe Williams, the voice of reason. We.